In today's Python Pandas video, we're going to be taking a look at interpolation, which allows you to fill in values between two different known data points within your Pandas data frame. Now, this only impacts numerical data. So if you are trying to fill in categorical data, you have to use fill in a instead. In this video, we're going to be going through 10 different examples, building up from like very basic and then expanding on this as we go. Also, all the code from this lesson is gonna be down below in an article on our website. So with this out of the way, grab a Python notebook and let's start coding. All right, let's jump into the video. So we're gonna start off with is importing in pandas as PD, and then we're also gonna import in numpy as NP. So import numpy as NP. So we'll put those in over here and we will get started. Now, what we're gonna use for our data, at least initially in the video, is gonna be temperatures in Zermont. Just visited Zermont, a beautiful city, and it kind of inspired me to make some of this data. So what we're gonna do is go over here and say data equals, and what we're gonna do inside over here, we're gonna have day. Um, we're gonna pass this into a data frame in a second, but we're just gonna create a quick dictionary. Uh, we're gonna do a pandas date range. No worries if you don't know how this specifically works. In fact, uh, our date video is gonna be out pretty soon. I'm finishing up the final prepping preparation of that, but we're gonna start on 2025, 0419, and then we're gonna go over here and say periods equals seven. So it's gonna be seven days. Right, and then we have that over here, and then we're gonna set our temperature, so temperature, and then we're gonna put in some null values, and that's why we are using NumPy. I just find it easy just to put np.nan like that. Uh, we'll put 30, we'll have a few other NANs I should put over here um, like that. All right, uh, we'll put 45, 40, and we'll put one more like that. That's perfectly okay. So now we have that. And then what we're gonna do next is create our data frame. So df equals pd.dataframe and just pass in our data. Now, what we're gonna do as well is we're gonna make a few copies of this data frame just because we're gonna be going through uh, so many examples that it's gonna get uh, too large of a data frame at the very end. So we're gonna actually make four copies of this. And all we're gonna do is go over here like and say df2 equals df.copy like that. And we're gonna do it a few times. So I'll run all these in a second. And we'll just go over here like that and we'll go three and four and that should get us through this tutorial um i know it's a little bit extra work but I promise you it's so much easier to read the data if we do that all right and i think we're ready to go for example number one and this is the basic one right so this is a linear interpolation so we'll say example one linear and this is going to be super easy for you guys so what i'm going to show you um i also didn't show you the data frame but let me show you that really quick. Um, I'll just go over here to DF and show you it's day and temperature like that. And I'll make a note to put that in uh, the code for the article because I did not do that. Um, so we have that over here, right? Null values. So we have a few different in here and we're good to go. All right. So let's go through example number one. And we're going to do our linear. And what we're going to do is say temperature linear, temperature linear. And we're going to say this is equal to DF. And we're going to pass in the column we're trying to interpolate. So we'll say uh, temperature. And we'll just say dot interpolate like that. And we're gonna pass in no parameters. So just keep it like this over here. And let's take a look at what our data frame looks like, right? So we go over here to our data frame right now. And you can see some of the values have uh, been fixed, right? Our first is still a null value because um, we don't have anything above it, right? So it's hard to predict what this would be. But you can see over here, we go 30, then we go up five to 35, then we go up five again to 40, then we have 45 over here, and then we have 40, and then we have 40 again over here. Okay. Um, and again, this is our very first basic example. Uh, example number two, what I want to show you is we can actually limit the direction of how we want to interpolate. So example two, which is going to be a limit direction. So you can limit your direction three different ways. You could either limit it forward, backwards, or you could look at it in both directions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just show you the syntax for all three of those, and then we can compare the data frame at the very end. So you can see all the differences. And the code is gonna be very similar, right? We're just gonna change one parameter inside, which is gonna be limit direction. Um, so we're gonna go over here, DF, we're gonna say temperature, and we're gonna say linear forward. So we're gonna still use linear on this and we'll change linear a little bit later in the video. We'll go over here to DF, we'll pass in temperature, right? 
And then we're going to say interpolate, so interpolate, and then we'll pass in limit direction, limit direction. And we're going to say this is equal to forward, right? And then we're going to just copy this a few times. So right over here and right over here. We're going to change this to backward, so backward. And then we're going to have this as both, right? So uh, we're going to also change this over here to backward, backward, and then both as well, right? So we have all of these on this side of things, but let's just run the code really fast. So one, two, and three, boom, we're done. And now let's take a look at what our data frame looks like. So we'll just pass in our data frame over here and take a look at this. So when we have forward, right, it only looks at the next value. So we have 30 and 45, so it fills those out, right? And this is by default on the, this side of things, right? Uh, when we look backwards, we can actually go backwards. So we talked about this null value initially, right? And how it wasn't filled because there's no backwards opportunity, right? But now that we have backwards, we can take this 30 value and propagate it backwards, right? So that has been filled on that side of things. And we still have a null value over here because we don't have any value a little bit later on within our data frame. Now, when we take a look at both, right? All of our values are filled. We have 30, which is filled on here, right? And we have 40 on this side of things. So again, just to reiterate, right? By default, we're gonna be using forward, right? So technically didn't have to show you this over here, but I do find it helpful just for the tutorial purpose on that side of things. Backwards, right? We'll fill in the value from over here, backwards on this side of things. And then both, you can go either forward or backwards, okay? Now, one thing you can also do is limit our area that we wanna take a look at. So this is gonna be example number three. So example three is limit the area. And what we're gonna do is start using data frame two just because we have already this filled fully on the screen and I would find it helpful. Uh, we start from a clean slate. So we're gonna start with DF2 and we're gonna start off with temperature linear inside. And we're gonna say this is equal to DF2. We'll pass in our temperature. And then we'll go over interpolate, so interpolate, and then we'll pass in limit area, so limit area. And we're gonna say this is equal to inside like this. Then we're gonna just duplicate this for outside, and we'll just say that's outside, and we'll just pass it outside over here as well. Okay, and let's run both of these over here. So, and then we will take a look at what happens with our data frame. So we'll just go over here and say DF2. So with this, right, inside only fills in null values that are surrounded by non-null values. So you can see inside, we were able to fill these over here, right? And outside only fills null values at the beginning or the end. Now it did not fill in this one over here, but it did fill in this one, whereas this was not filled with inside, right? You can see inside filled inside values, outside filled our last value on the outside. And that's the difference between both of these um, and the default on this side of things is no restriction. So you can limit it if you want to. And again, inside, imagine inside in between data that we know values for, outside is outside of those data points. And that's why we still have those nulls on over there. So now what I wanna do is jump into example four. And this is gonna be limiting the number. So limit number. And let's imagine we go back to DF2 and we're gonna say DF2 and we're gonna say temperature limited. So temperature limited. And let me just put over here, limited like that. And we're gonna say this is equal to DF2, pass in our temperature, so temperature like that. We'll say interpolate, so interpolate. And we'll put a limit equal to one on this side of things, right? So we're just gonna fill in one value and just to show you what this looks like now, we go to DF2 over here, and you'll see that it only fills in this value over here at 35, and it leaves this one null. And again, you can change the number on your limit, but for this case, I felt like it'd be pretty easy just to show you what would happen with one. All right, so now what I wanna do is show you a few different methods that you could use beyond just linear, because linear is basic. It does work, at least in some scenarios, but you will wanna play around with it if you wanna fill in your values a little bit better. And there's no way I could cover every single um, method within this video. In fact, there are a ton. 
all of them will be linked down below on the article on our website. Also, some of these have been deprecated, uh, such as forward fill and backwards fill. Uh, we'll cover that in another video in the series because you should not be using it with interpolation anymore. But let's jump into our first example over here. We'll just cover a few of the more popular ones and we'll say polynomial. And you can think of like polynomial as like a curve uh, from back in like either like algebra two or pre-calc or calculus, whenever you learned about this in um, let's say high school or would it be like university or college when you're overseas. Um, regardless, uh, people would say, oh, you'll never use this in the future. Well, yeah, we're using it right now within Python pandas, but uh, I was a math nerd in high school. But regardless, what we're gonna do is now use a data frame at three for all these different types of methods. And let's jump right into it. So what we're gonna start off with first is our polynomial, as I mentioned, and we're gonna go over here, temperature, let's say poly two, and this will make sense a little bit more in a second. And we're gonna say this is equal to DF3. We'll pass in temperature over here. We're gonna say interpolate, so interpolate. And then we set our method. So we'll say method equals polynomial. polynomial. And one thing with your polynomial is you're gonna to have to set an order. So we're gonna say order equals two, right? And essentially what the order means is we're fitting um, in this case, a polynomial with second degree order, which is gonna be a quadratic, a, a parabola curve, right? And if you want a more complex curve, you can add more to this order, right? But one thing to note is if you do expand this order, right, there is a possibility of you overfitting. So in this video, I'll just put over here order two, we're gonna use order two and another thing in a second. But again, you can change this as you want. Uh, think of it as your levels of your polynomial, right? Your second is x squared, which is gonna be a quadratic curve, right, probably. All right, so we have that over here for df3. Now let's take a look at what df3 looks like. We'll just pass that in over here, and you can see temperature over here. We have our quadratic. Okay, now what I wanna show you next is spline. Now spline is very similar to our polynomial, but apparently it is a bit of a smoother curve. So we'll use that right now. So example six is spline, and we'll write a little bit more about it also uh, within the article down below. Uh, so we'll go over here and say spline, and honestly, the code is gonna be the same because we need to put our order in over here. So we'll just change this to spline two, and then we'll just change that over here to spline. Right. Oh, and one other thing to mention with spline, you do need to have a numeric index and just to mention what the numeric index is, right? You see how it starts with a zero. So this is typically what your default is uh, when you have a data frame. You can obviously set your index to something else, but it will throw errors if you do not have a numeric index. Um, all right, so now we have spline over here. We'll just run that for DF3, and then we'll take a look if there's much of a difference on here. Obviously, this is a pretty simplistic data set, so there's gonna be differences if you have a little bit more complicated one. Um, but it's it's very similar, except now we have a value of 30 here at the very end for 425, whereas the polynomial did not have that. Uh, they both still have a null value for that first row over here. All right, uh, another one that's common to use is index. All right, so we'll look over that. So example seven, and this just uses the numerical index. So we'll just say index and uh, let's run that code. We'll go over here. We do not need an order for our index, so we'll just remove that. We'll change this over here to index, and we'll say temperature index like this. All right, and let's take a look at that. So temperature index, and we'll go to DF3 again. And you can see um, we still have a null value over here, and now we have a 40 value for 425, all right? And, uh, Let's look at nearest now, and we'll go into nearest. That'll be example eight, nearest. And this looks at the nearest available value. And we'll say example eight. And we'll just grab this. And I expect the results to be pretty close to what we've already been having throughout this uh, few different methods, but we'll say nearest, we'll just pass in that over here. Again, a lot of experimentation, right? See what works best for you. This is obviously way more complex than just using fill NA, um, although you could use statistical ways with fill NA, 
but this gives you another option, right? So I'll just pass in the F3, and you can see uh, we have our values. Over here at 30 is as close as the 30, 45 over here is as close as the 45, right? It's a little bit different than what we've been going through. And uh, we still have a null value over here, and we still have a null value over here. And again, like there is a ton. I'm just gonna copy over just to show you like all the different methods, and we're not gonna cover them all in the video. You know, we'll be covering them in the article, just talking about them. But like, you could see how long this video would take if I went through every single one of these. And again, uh, forward and backward fill, right? That's been deprecated. You should not be using this, but there is there's a ton of stuff in over here. So I'm just gonna delete that. And uh, now what I want to do is go over some time-based interpolation. So let's do that. And we do have time data already, so we don't have to make a new data frame. Um, so we say example nine, time-based interpolation. And obviously this is really good for time series data. And we'll jump into that. So what we're going to do is set up a DF time index. And we're going to say index equals. And we're going to go to df4.set index. We'll pass in our day, right? Again, we have our day over here, so might as well just do that. Great, and now we're gonna just go through that. So I guess I could have just done DF4 instead and just set the index, but it's whatever. Um, we'll say index like that, say temperature time, and we're gonna go over here and say this is equal to DF time index. We'll pass in temperature, so temperature, and say interpolate. We'll put over here method equals time. So method equals time. And we'll take a look at that in here in a second. And here we go, right? So the same 30, 35, 40, 45, 40, as well as 40. Um, okay, so everything in here has been so far through different rows, right? You can see we've been going on that side of things. I wanna show you one that is gonna be based off of columns just in case you do have that example. And uh, we're gonna actually create a new data frame for that. So we'll say example 10, which is gonna be a change to axis, All right? And what we're gonna do is actually paste in some code over here, uh, just to, to save you guys some time. So you can just imagine there's four different races, one, two, three, four, and, and different runners, right? Runner one through four. So we'll have that over here. And just to show you what this looks like, right? Tons and tons of null values in over here. And you can see access, right? Um, lots of old values, as I mentioned. But we're gonna start cleaning these up. So what we're gonna do on here is go over here and say, DF interpolated axis one equals DF axis interpolate. Just pass in axis equals one like that. And this will make sure we interpolate across columns rather than rows. And you've seen this, if you watch other videos on the channel, always access one looks at columns instead of rows. And just to show you what this looks like now in comparison, right? Um, we are filling in some of these values. So you can see like this NAN over here has a value of 86.5 right now. This has 86, uh, where that was at over here. And we filled in also the value over here at the very end of 80 and 91. And again, you can change this up to be as complex as you want. I've, I've showed you a lot of examples a little bit earlier. Um, those are applicable when we look at columns instead of rows. But yeah, just to recap this video, right? Going through it again. Um, by default, we're taking a look at linear, right? But I, I showed you a ton of different methods and there's a ton also in the pandas docs that you can change up quite a bit. Uh, I showed you how you can limit the direction based around it, limit the area or also limit the number. Um, so three different parameters that you could use to limit what is being filled. Uh, and then I went over a few different common approaches that people use, polynomial, right? And spline can be very similar on that side of things. Uh, then we also have index and nearest. And then we also have time-based interpolation. And lastly, you know, if you want to look at columns instead of rows, make sure you use axis of number one. Hey guys, I appreciate you checking out this video on interpolation. If you found it valuable, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Try to upload a few different videos every single week. Down below, you'll find the links to our free Discord server, the code from this video, as well as a few other Python Pandas videos. If you want to continue our Pandas playlist, though, click right over here and check out more videos.